This class is going to have a little bit of opening, right? So a little bit of even segmental movement of our spine and then mostly breath work with core stability work. Very important, the breath work for our nervous system when we have pain and of course the stability so that our body is like, okay, you're safe, it's all right. All right, you're gonna need a yoga block or something to hold between your legs and something to be kneeling on. Of course, always optional, right? If you don't have something and some sort of head support in case you need that. And you are going to start on your back. Once you're on the mat, you're gonna let your hands rest either down by your side or on your low belly and your upper belly. And you're gonna do your wave breath where you start breathing in your low belly and let it go all the way up into your chest. Maybe you put a hand on your chest to allow yourself to really move there. Start in the low belly as you inhale. Go through the middle all the way up to the upper. And then exhale, just let it all go. Just one more like that. Let your body sink into the mat. Inhaling, 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 inhale. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Now we're gonna add movement to that. I like to take my hands to my pelvis. I like to imagine them like two dials on a radio and I gotta to tune to the same station. So you're gonna inhale and you're gonna let your pelvis tip forward. And you're gonna turn those dials forward like in the direction of your feet. Sometimes you will think about having soup in your belly, you're spilling out through your pubic bone to the floor. On your exhale, you curl the pelvis under. So you're dialing the, the stations or your pelvic bones towards your face. The soup spills towards your belly, towards your chest. Inhale, rolling forward. Exhale, rolling back. As you roll back, make sure you don't I'm not gripping my hips to do this. We will get to bridging and glutes and all that stuff. I'm not gripping to do this. I'm letting my belly and my breath guide this. My feet are just planted. Inhale, rolling forward. Maybe rolling forward starts to pull in your low back. To be honest, sometimes that's good for the discs. If you have disc issues, sometimes it's not. So listen to what your body is feeling. Always, always, always. That's the priority is tuning in to what's right for you. And not only what makes you feel good in the moment, but what makes you feel good after, what lasts longer. Exhale as you rock back towards your face. Let your back connect with the mat here. Inhale, roll forward. This time as you go forward, if you've got head support, you're gonna let that go. You're gonna reach your arms towards the ceiling, palms facing each other. You are then going to press into your feet on an exhale and begin to lift the hips up into a little bridge. Come up as high as it feels comfortable for you, and you could do just a hinging bridge, like a normal glute bridge, or you could curl the pelvis under and roll up. The main thing is that when we come down, you're going to articulate. You're going to take your arms that are overhead, you're going to start to reach them towards the floor above your head. Hold there like someone's pulling your fingertips and someone's pulling your knees, and on your exhale, you're going to, there's a little bit of abdominal engagement, but I'm going to start to roll my rib cage down. Then my waistline, navel, right? Then my, the rest of my lumbar spine, then my pelvis, ooh, there's a little zigzaggy, and then the arms come up towards the ceiling. Inhale there. Exhale, either start with a curl or just press straight into your feet as you lift up. This is where we're getting this openness and this segmental movement, but we're doing it in a way that is really passive and pretty safe for the spine. There's not a huge load on the back when you're rolling down, right? So you don't have you know, the weight of your body transferring through the spine. And one more like that. Take your time, exhale as you come up, whether you're curling or hinging is totally up to you. Reach the arms overhead. I'm making sure my belly and my back are pushing to the ceiling. I don't care how high I come, I care about the work, and then I really, really care about this segmental movement on the way down with my limbs kind of helping me lengthen as I roll all the way down, bring the arms up to the ceiling. If you've got something to hold between your legs, you're gonna place it between your thighs, kind of closer to the pelvis than to the knees. Walk your feet close enough 
so that your feet, knees, and hips are relatively parallel or as parallel as you feel like you can get them. Bring your arms down by your side. Make sure your chest is nice and open and relaxed. And you are going to exhale and hug whatever you've got between your block. Just enough belly hug like you just have a little cardigan that you just button together. Press into your hips and lift the butt just a little bit off the mat. Make sure that when you did this, it wasn't back arching trying to lift up. You just are pushing down through your feet to get your butt just a little bit off the mat, right? I might be touching it, but I'm not weight bearing in the mat. And then from there, you're going to use your feet and your legs to do any more lifting. So I'm going to think, push down through my feet. My belly stays together. Again, doesn't matter the height. It's the intention of moving through your hip joint, not your back. Your back is going up and down because your hips are lifting you up. So your legs are picking up your pelvis, which is picking up your sacrum, which is picking up your spine. You're gonna come up and then you're gonna drop down. So just regular glute bridges, but we're really holding ourselves accountable to parallel with the thing between your legs. So in my case, the yoga block. And I'm really waiting for the information to think, push down through my feet, belly's gently pulling in, I'm exhaling up, I'm inhaling down. Just two more like this. Exhaling up, belly pulling in on the exhale, inhaling down. Exhale coming up, inhale dropping down. And I have noticed because I've been pulling so much with my feet that my shoulders are a little bit elevated, but they're not tense. It's just passive because I've pulled myself in towards my feet. Don't bother with that. It's okay for that to happen. All right, from there, you've woken up your legs. Make sure that your ribs are still calm and you're just going to breathe for a moment. So another wave breath. Three to four counts from the low belly all the way up into the thorax, the rib cage, the chest. Exhale, let that go. Now what we're going to do is heel slides. I am going to slide my head support back underneath me because it's going to help my ribs be a little bit heavier on the ground, right? So that's going to allow my rib cage to drop. If you've got something between your legs, take it to the side. If your mat's extra sticky, pull the mat towards your butt. But if not, you can just slide your feet here. So heel slides, you are going to stretch one leg out and you are going to breathe in. Now, did I twist? Did I rotate? Can I hold center? Can I keep my ribs calm? Can I exhale, hollow and hug my belly in? It's like instead of a cardigan, which might have to like a little bit of energy towards the center buttoning up. It's more like a really, like I used to call it tight white pants, like zipping in and up like a high-waisted tight pant, or like a wetsuit that zips in the front, like you really wanna feel like it's coming in and back and up. You're gonna try the other side. You're gonna inhale, slide a leg away. Minimal rotation in your sacrum, pelvis, spine, and rib cage. Exhale as you pull that leg in, but really it starts with the exhale in the belly, stabilizing you. Inhale, so again, core stability. We've done our gentle elongation. We've done breath, which is a little bit of mobility there. And now we're exhaling, we're incorporating those abdominals to hold ourselves stable. Inhale, a leg out. Exhale, hug and hollow the belly as you bring that leg in. Inhale, sliding a leg out. Exhale as you hug and hollow and come in. Inhale as you take the other leg out. Exhale as you come all the way in, hold in there. So now we're gonna take it up. We're gonna add a little bit of load into this trunk. So make sure the rims and the back feel nice and long and stable, right? And you're just gonna keep one foot on the ground. You're gonna exhale. Hug and hollow the belly and allow one hip to hinge, bringing the knee over the hip. Now just come up. And so often we are so tied up in this hip joint that we just have rocked the pelvis. I'm not opposed to the spine being down, the pelvis being rocked, but you had to start. You have to stay there. You have to hold everything here. Or you can just stay here and let your hip really hinge, which is, you know, depends on what your skill set is, right? So you're just going to bring that leg up and you're going to wiggle it around. And you're gonna make sure you've made a clear choice of I'm keeping my pelvis and ribs level or I've added a little tilt to my pelvis towards my face and my spine is now down on the mat 
and I'm pulling and I'm 100% stable and long there. So wherever you are, you have to stay there so you're not yo-yoing through your back. And wherever you are, you might just do one leg at a time, but if you can, you're gonna try and challenge yourself by having both legs lifted up without your pelvis tilting or your back arching more. So if you have a normal amount of arcs that you held stable, that's fine. If you kept your back on the mat, you keep your back on the mat, but you're gonna make sure your knees come over the hips. Your feet could drop if you tend to work your quads or you could keep them lifted. And we are just gonna do a little marching. So I'm gonna let one leg drop towards the floor, only amount that feels like I can keep myself stable and long and no pulling through my head and not sinking down there. And then as I exhale, hug and hollow the belly back. And it's almost as if I'm dragging my leg back up. Inhale, drop a leg down. Exhale, lift a leg up. I want you to really feel that breath, especially in the back and side of the rib cage. That's gonna help you stabilize the spine. The legs, the deep inner thigh, bless your trochanter of your leg, has an attachment all the way up above your navel into the front of your spine. That's the top of your psoas muscle. If you ever hear people talk about psoas and nervous system, that's what that is. So the top of that is all the way up above your navel, back on the front of your spine. Inhale down. So if you can get those ribs to widen back and tether, you're gonna keep the top of that psoas, the back of the diaphragm, anchor as you let that leg drop and lift. One, let's do uh, one more set after this. Inhale down, exhale up. Inhale down. And this is where that head support is really helpful for my ribs to stay grounded. Last one. Exhale up. Bring your feet down. Take a moment. And your back might have kicked in and started working, right? So if you did both legs at the same time, that's a fair amount of load that you're adding into your core. So you're working on core stability with the load of your legs. If you did one leg at a time, that's fine too. You're still focused on the same thing. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll over to your hands and knees, and we're just gonna do very classic bird dog exercise. So when you're on your hands and knees, you are going to grab a block nearby. If this is the right call, you're gonna take your block and put it under one knee, one shin, one knee. If you don't wanna use a block, don't have a block, do not worry about it, just use your mat. You're on your hands and knees. Um, if you have something underneath your knee, the other leg is the one that's gonna stretch back and you're gonna have your toes tucked and your heel reaching long. And you're gonna take your opposite hand to that straight leg, just out. So I'm just gonna start with my fingertips out one way, my heels reaching the other way. I've got this diagonal lengthening, but I've also got this diagonal stabilizing. And I'm gonna think head to tail lengthening pubic bone to breast bone lengthening, and my belly lifting in and up. Really push through that bottom arm to stabilize. Now on your exhale, I'm pushing through my bottom arm and my bottom shin, and I'm gonna exhale, I'm gonna pull my belly in, back, and up as I slowly lift that opposite arm out and up. Now just stay there, and don't worry about how high you come. Go lower, but reach longer, and think, or am I even in both sides of my waist? Can I think about being an arrow, not a bow? Reach the leg a little longer. Work your quadriceps to straighten your knee. Inhale, tap that arm and leg down. Exhale, reach and lift. Don't think high, think long. Inhale, down. So that length, decompression, can be with your stability work. Inhale, down. Exhale, hold there. Now just take one deep breath here. Breathing into that backside rib cage. Exhale, pull the belly into center, like tight white pants even here. Bring the arm down, bring the leg down, do the other side. If you're using the block, switch knees. If you're just on the mat, switch knees. <laughs> Find your setup with that free leg reaching back, toes are on the ground. Square everything off, so pelvis, chest, square with the mat. My, um, my shin that's down and my hand that's down really pushing down and even kind of pulling towards each other a little bit. The opposite arm is gonna reach out. So you've got this two sides lengthening, 
diagonally and two sides connecting diagonally. And in the middle, you want to think, are both sides of my waist even? Head to tail long, breastbone to pubic bone long. Lift those ribs up. Breathing there, exhale, hollow the belly, reach that arm and leg out. Again, not crazy high, I'm not trying to arch my back. Now I've gone out of, I'm not in core stability anymore. I've gone to extension. I just wanna be there, I wanna lengthen. Reach my leg longer. Can be low, could be just hovering on the ground, that's fine. And then tap them down, inhale down. Exhale, reach and lift. Inhale down. Exhale, reach and lift. Inhale down. Exhale, reach and lift and hold there. Inhale. Exhale, hug and hollow. Bring the hand down, bring the knee down. Slide your block out of the way. Or if you wanna keep it for child's pose, you can. Now again, you could do just a butt, butt up, head down child's pose if your knees can't handle it. Or you can slowly lengthen. Like I'm gonna curl my tail a little bit, but I'm also gonna lift my ribs quite a bit, allow my neck to soften and round. And then I'm gonna shift back taking my butt slowly back to my heels, letting my belly kind of lift away from my thighs and then slowly dropping down, walking my hands forward. Maybe I grab some padding for my forehead. And you go back to your breath. And what's really nice about breathing in child's pose is you can only breathe so much against your thighs so that you have this opportunity to really tune into how your breath stretches into your back body and then exhale let it go two more inhaling exhale letting it go one more inhaling exhale letting it go and then walk your hands towards your legs push down through your hands as you slowly roll up I'm taking my time. I'm not popping my head up. I'm definitely not arching my back to come up, right? I'm going to roll my pelvis level. My ribs come on top of my pelvis, then my shoulders, then my neck, then my head. I'm going to link some videos below so that you have options because this might really help and make you feel really good, or it might feel like I need something more, or it might feel like I need something less. I need something that's like more restorative. My strength levels are not there, or my pain level in my pain brain are so heightened that I need to I need to downregulate. I need to get into parasympathetic nervous system. So there's gonna be options below that you can choose that might take you in either direction because each of us is holding on to a lifetime of information, stories, patterns, all the things that we hold on to in our lives. And we each have our own story and our own process, which is why I think it's so important to have a practice where you're acknowledging your body over anyone else's. So until next time, keep listening to your body and keep moving.